It's Port Adelaide, completely different kettle of fish. They're young guys. Kane continue to, def to defy, and they have been the engine room behind this surge into September, October, yeah. I should say. No doubt, Hutchie. And, yeah, Lord, I mentioned the age of Geelong. I thought for the first time they looked old and they looked exposed. And maybe that gets magnified next season when the season gets longer and games get longer. And maybe the shorter season has helped those older guys back up. But, yeah, Port Adelaide did expose the older Geelong side. What they have been able to do is lift through the midfield. So Port Adelaide lose the hitouts on the weekend quite convincingly, but win clearances by eight. And that enables them to lock the ball in their forward half. It's a forward half game that they've been playing and Geelong couldn't exit out of the defence. I want to look at the way that Ken Hinckley, Jason Critz from Port Adelaide, the list manager, has set up for this sustained, sustained period of success that I suspect Port Adelaide will have. These are the changes that they have made dating back to 2016. You can go back further to the Sam Powell Pepper draft as well and the Todd Marshall draft, but they made some really tough decisions as well to get rid of Polek and Pittard who are inside their best 22. And just to, to get the pick for Burton and also Dersma, that Chad Wingard one in 2018 was so significant. And we'll speak about Dougal Howard in a moment and leaving Paddy Ryder, two players who probably still would be or would be in their best team now but they've gone young again. It's completely worked for them, and those guys are having a big impact. Kane, I've never asked you this question, but I've seen you on social media have a go at the Hinkley haters. Where are they now? Who, who are you talking about when you, when you often, often, often reference that? If you lived uh, in Adelaide, Lordo, mm. probably 85% of the Port Adelaide fans wanted Ken Hinkley gone um, at this point last year, even dating back further than that. And it, it came from the pressure of not being able to win a final since 2014. There, there's some significant media figures as well, and I think there was a subcommittee at the footy club that sits underneath the board that wanted Ken Hinkley gone. And there's some big, famous Port Adelaide people on that. I'm not going to name them right here, but it was, a, it was a line in the sand moment for David Koch. Did he move on Ken Hinkley with a year to go? Or did he stick with him? And it's been justified that he stuck with him. And I expect him to sign a contract extension further than 2021 during this preseason. You touched on Dougal Howard. I think it's a big error. And I didn't know much about Dougal Howard, but I know how highly you thought of him. And that's a big worry for mine moving on to grand final prelim is Trent McKenzie. Everyone said he did OK. But Hawkins has had five shots. It concerns me that Trent McKenzie could be a fullback in a grand final on these hulks like a Tom Lynch or a Tom Hawkins again when Dougal Howard was let go from the club. So Hawkins wouldn't be able to do that if Dougal Howard was playing for Port Adelaide on the weekend. Kane, so I just wonder how they came to this decision to let this man go. It was a bizarre decision for me and that's the hesitation I have with them as well. Can Jonas Clurie and Mackenzie hold up against, you know, if, it, if it's Hipwood and McStay and big Oscar McInerney drifting forward, or if it's Lynch and Rewalt in a prelim final, I would say no. So they've got a good young player, Mitch Georgiades, who they like. But right now, 22-year-old, he captained the side last year, Dougal Howard. They didn't believe he could play in defence. Lordo, they wanted yep. to turn there, him there into a, a forward, There which was a was dispute bizarre. over his position, wasn't it? And Dougal which Howard is... was adamant that he wasn't going to play up forward. Bizarre. Great mm. closing speed, one of the best spoilers in the game and can intercept Mark. So but... Saints have got a ripper. I take your point, but McKenzie was fantastic. And you, oh. you look back a year ago, what's Thomas Rockcliffe, Mot Motlop and McKenzie? They've, they've squandered their ends. They've got something out of McKenzie, Motlop and Rockcliffe so in a final. Hutchie, he should have yeah. kicked four to five goals. So how was he fantastic? Well, he did the absolute best job he could do yeah. outside the way he's he was. Doing he the pushed best him job. wide to boundaries. You just said he's doing the best job he could possibly do. When but he did, they let he go did a, manage a to get back. Tom leading to boundaries on both yeah, sides. Yeah, but still, I, I hate that when you, you, we've lured a guy that's done OK yep. when the guy had six shots for goal on him. Caro, we all, if the results go as, they, as they're supposed to go in the prelim, long way to go, yep. there's a scenario here where Port are the one seed and Brisbane are the two seed, and that game's played at the Gabba. That fateful decision of the SA government to perhaps not go quite as hard as early as Queensland... Uh, could, in a weird way, cost Port Adelaide a significant advantage on grand final day? Oh, I think Port accepted, though, a long time ago that they weren't going to fight for South Australia to host the grand final. I, I think David Koch read the writing on the wall. I don't think there was any way the AFL was going to move that way from Queensland. Once you got to around, I don't know, around 14, 13, 14, Craig, they'd just done too much the people of Queensland. And if Port, Port came to Queensland and absolutely ran, ran amok, I mean, that's, that's how they built their season, on their great results up on the Gold Coast and the Gabba. So they hold no fear for Port Adelaide. I don't think... I think it's unrealistic.